You may remember your downfalls. You may remember. And let me just say this. Sometimes it's good for us to remember where we came from so that we don't go back. Don't, laugh, don't remember so that it beats you down. But it's, not, it's, it's a little bit healthy to remember where you came from. Help me understand what I'm saying. But God doesn't remember. He doesn't hold it against you. And as I was reading this story, I'm going to read it to you real quick here. Matthew chapter 28. I'm going to statement in Matthew, although the story is in all four of those Gospels. Matthew 28, 1 through 9. The story goes like this. And it's funny because every time I read this translation, I'm reading from God's Word translation today. I remember, I think last year I, I read from the New Living Translation. And last year was our first Easter in Big House in our new building. How cool was that? This is our second Easter at Big House in our new building, and it's very cool. Last year I preached a message because in the New Living Translation, this first verse that I'm getting ready to read, and the God's Word translation, it says, After the day of worship, which was Saturday, because that was the Sabbath, as the sun rose Sunday morning, Mary from Magdala and the other Mary went to the tomb. And um, one of the other Gospels, it says, The other Mary, or the other Mary, mother of James, I like the way they did it humbly, James is the brother of Jesus. So this was really the mother of Jesus, but they were trying to remain humble for this lady. Mary and Mary went to the tomb, and it was as the sun rose. Last year I used the scripture that said, as a new day was dawning. And let me just say this, as I review the year, and I do that a lot on, on special occasions like this, and you should in your life. You should set markers in your life of of things you, 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 you've seen victory in, of things you're working on, and things that you've got dreams and goals to see happen. How many understand what I'm saying? You should set markers in your life. And last year when I preached the New Day Dawning, I, 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 I told the church we have a New Day Dawning in Big House. We have great history. I love our history. Matter of fact, we launched in the bar. We were in the bar for four years. Two different bars shut down because we were preaching in the bar. How, how cool is that? But watch this. I think it's about time to launch another big house in another bar somewhere and get busy. How many know what I'm saying? Because a new day was dawning. And so as the sun rose Sunday morning, and I believe God's going to raise up new visions and new pastors and new preachers right here in our congregation. As the, as the sun rose that Sunday morning, Mary and Mary went to the tomb. Verse 2. Suddenly, there was a powerful earthquake. An angel of the Lord came down from heaven and rolled away the stone. Another, another, another one of the um, gospels that was recording, and as the ladies were walking, they recorded their conversation, saying, "I wonder when we get there, because they were bringing spice and stuff to take care of the, the body that, it, that that was the dead body. They were they, they weren't thinking resurrection. They were thinking we're going to do what's proper now, because it was a dark day. They they had it as the sun. It was still dark, and the, the, the new day was dawning, and it was dark in there. This was the man they thought was the the hope, the Messiah, the one that was going to bring freedom." And now he's dead. It didn't work out the way they thought. How I many get what I'm saying? It was a dark day for them. They weren't coming to celebrate the resurrection the way you and I are that Easter morning. They were going with a heavy, heavy, heavy heart. Because the hopes and dreams that they thought were true. Now they thought maybe weren't true. And as they go, they discuss how will we roll away the stone. But as they go, they begin to feel an earthquake like they felt three days before when he passed away. And the, the, the earthquake three days before shook so hard, bodies began to rock out of the graves. And the old days, saints of old from the Old Testament began to get up. They were walking around for those days that Jesus was down there. Those guys was up walking around in the cemetery and came into Jerusalem when he rose from the dead. You can read back a little bit in chapter 27, Matthew, if you want to see that story. It's pretty cool. You talk about zombies. I mean, the world's full of zombies, right? Isn't that the new craze? The zombies, zombie killers, walking, living dead, you know, grateful dead. Now you can name that message, all kinds of different things there. Oh, Lord, do. Suddenly a powerful earthquake. And the angel of the Lord came down from heaven and rolled away the stone and was sitting on it. 
He was bright as his lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were, were deathly afraid. No stinking wonder an earthquake and an angel show up, roll away the stone. Stone that the two of them or three of them or six of them couldn't roll away. He shakes loose and they shook in their boots. The angel of the Lord said to the women, don't be afraid. In other words, these soldiers are all scared. They passed out. They, 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 they fainted. They're freaked out. You ladies, no need to fear. Don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus. Who was crucified. He's not here. He has been brought back to life. As he said. Come see the place where he was laying. Look. Go quickly. Tell the disciples. That he has been brought back to life. That he is alive. Going ahead of them to Galilee. <coughs> there they will see him. Take note. What I told you. They hurried away from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to the disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met, met them and greeted them, and they went to him, bowed down, and worshipped him and took a hold of his feet. This morning, it's just all about Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. And I'm going to tell you, there is no more fitting song than that song they sang, Jesus. Always on my mind. That's all that was on my mind. I like to come up with like, like snappy titles and things like that. It was just Jesus this morning. It's not catchy. It's not snappy. It's no play on words. It's just Jesus. And there's a few things in this message today for this Easter Sunday that I want you to grab a hold of with Jesus, okay? I want you to use Jesus. I want you to make him part of your life. I want you to grab hold of Jesus the way we see him in this story. Verse 20, for, uh, chapter 28. I'm going to be in Matthew 28, so I may not say 28 all the time. Matthew 28, verse 5. The angel of the Lord said to the women, don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus. Number one point today is looking for Jesus. Folks, let me tell you, you may, I, I, when I found Jesus, let me tell you, I didn't think I was looking for Jesus, but do you know what I found? Jesus. Because deep down on the inside of us, no matter how hard, no matter where you've been looking, you've been looking for Jesus. You made me think your problem was finances. You might have thought your problem was like me, drug addiction, alcoholism, but you're looking for Jesus. Amen. Those things just don't fit. All you're doing is, see, we're like a puzzle, every one of us. And you all have gifts and talents. You're supposed to be doing some things, and some of you are fulfilling some of those things you're supposed to be doing. Even like me, you were probably doing some things you were supposed to be doing before you met Jesus. You had some pieces plugged into the right place. How many get what I'm saying? But there's one spot that is not versatile. It doesn't fit anywhere else and nothing else fits in its spot. And it's that word, Jesus. There is nothing that can fulfill the spot that was made for you because you were made in the likeness and the image of God. There's nothing that will fill that spot like Jesus. Even if you thought you were looking for a husband or a wife, nothing will fill it like Jesus. Even if you thought you were looking for fulfillment and friends and being popular, even if you thought you were looking for fulfillment and trying to be a, a recluse and stay away from folks. We are all different, so we all had different things going on. But what you were really looking for is Jesus. And the angel of the Lord said, ladies, and I would say big house family because this goes beyond ladies. I don't know what you came today. You came thinking we're just going to celebrate Easter and I'm going to go home and have a nice little uh, chicken, ham, turkey, sloppy joes, I don't barbecue. I don't know what you're going to have. But whatever you came in thinking Easter was all jelly beans and Easter eggs, cotton candy, all that stuff. Whatever you came in thinking Easter was Easter bunnies, Peter Cocktail, Rock Mountain Bunny Trail. Whatever you came in thinking you was looking for this Easter, I don't care if you got a golden egg hunt after this. You might be looking for golden eggs later, but right now I'm going to tell you, I know you came, whether you realize you're not looking for Jesus. And God knew that. And let's just keep looking for Jesus. Keep that as a priority in our life. Number two, remember, he is and was crucified. 
crucified. It's, listen, the resurrection does not deny the fact that he really died on a cross. I'm going to get what I'm saying. Because the whole thing had to be true. Bits and pieces can't be true. He fulfilled every single prophecy prediction about him from the Old Testament. Every one of them from birth, death, to the way he lived, the way he healed, where he did his first miracle, from the baptism of John and being baptized by John, from the whole thing. And part of that was he had to willingly lay down his life on that cross. Hey, listen, they came to take him. You know what Peter did? Man, Peter whooped out a sword and chopped off the servant boy's ear that was reaching out to grab Jesus. Thank God he didn't chop off his hand. I don't know what's worse, your ear or your hand anyways. It's all bad, right? But you know what? Jesus said, whoa, 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 Peter. The time's come. It's right. Didn't seem right to Peter. How many get what I'm saying? Peter wants to protect the master. He wants to protect his teacher. He wants to protect the guy that he believes is his savior. And all of a sudden, Jesus walks away. Tied up. Going to court. Innocent man. Later on that day, he's crucified. They take these big old nails. They put them through his wrist in there somewhere. Probably had to tie ropes around his wrist as well to hold him up there. I don't. I believe after a long enough time any guy's wrist would eventually just ripped, you know, fallen off. Put nails in his hands and in his feet. He was crucified like no one else was. He was crucified after a beating. He was crucified and he gave up his life on that cross. It happened. Don't forget, there was a crucified Jesus. I know we're looking for Jesus. Sometimes it's fun to look for the little baby in the manger, Jesus, in Christmas. We talk a lot about that. But we can't ever forget about the fact that he really was crucified. Because that, if it wasn't for the crucifixion, if it wasn't for the crucifixion, there was no fulfillment of him being dying on that cross and paying for our sins on it. He had to be crucified. But not only number two did he be crucified, but number three, he was resurrected. Amen? And that's what Easter's all about. Because if he just died on that cross and stayed in that tomb, it was over. But Matthew 28, verse 6 says, he's not here. That's what the angel told him. Hey, listen, look, take a peek, go ahead. But the clothes are folded. He's not here. He's been brought back to life as he said. Come, see the place where he was laying. Come on in. Hey, listen. It's okay to remember, and then and I give nails, but I don't give nails to people so that we can pull them out with our chains and weep because, oh, he was crucified. No, those nails are a sign of victory to us because when we remember him being crucified on that cross, we remember the next thing is that he was resurrected from the dead so that you and I could be resurrected from our sinful nature so that we can have forgiveness of our sins and so that we can have eternal life promised to us in heaven. Amen? So not only should we be looking for Jesus, you should be looking for Jesus. Listen, even when you're saved, well, now that you're walking with you, man, you should be looking for Jesus in every circumstance. When you walk into a new place, when you go to the restaurant, when you go to Circle K, you should be looking for Jesus to show up with you everywhere you go. You should remember, yes, he was crucified. And more importantly, yes, he was resurrected on the third day. And then number four, the angel told them, verse 7, Matthew 28, the angel told them, then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been brought back to life. Family, we not only got to be looking for Jesus. We got not only got to know he's a crucified Jesus. We got to know he's a resurrected Jesus. We're expected to tell people about Jesus. You should be telling about Jesus. Man, let me tell you, moms and dads, and I'm, I'm so proud of our Sunday school program going on. These ladies, and, and, and I'm excited that we're getting ready to have more men in there. Man, we're going to talk about that this Thursday. But if you're a man and you'd like to volunteer, let me tell you, kids' ministry isn't just for the ladies. Matter of fact, I want to have a man in there every single Sunday morning. So if you're a man and you say, hey, you know what, I'd be, I'd be willing to go in there and just read a Bible story to the kids once once a month. Just put it on a visitor's card for me and put it in the bucket when you give your offering because this is the thing. How many know we need to be speaking about Jesus to our young people? Men and women, not just the mamas. 
Listen, we're past that day. Big House ain't that church that just the mamas is going to raise kids here. Amen? Amen. We're that church that I, I pray that we're going to change the tide that men, that someday that we have a, a, such a reputation for being men of prayer, men of God's word, that it won't be. The, and ladies, don't throw off here. If you're a new visitor, lady, I'm not, uh, this is no throw off on ladies, okay? But it's high time that, that, that we stop hearing testimonies of people saying, I was a drug addict, I was all jacked up, I was in gangs, and I had a praying grandma. That's good stuff. But thank God I had a praying grandma. I know that's what got me into the kingdom of God. But at Big House, how cool would it be if they said, I had a praying grandpa. My dad, I heard him praying for me. Every night I come in high, I heard my dad on his knees praying that I would get saved, praying that I get set free with my mama. We need to tell about Jesus. It starts in our homes. Right. Folks, let me tell you this. Don't go, go, don't go trying to export what you don't already have imported into your own home. Yeah. Come on. Let me get what I'm saying. You ain't talking about Jesus at home. Don't go out on the street corner and be some showboat talking about Jesus. Everybody get what I'm saying? Don't plaster your car or your motorcycle full of Jesus stickers if you ain't talking about Jesus at home. Now, I'm the first one that I'm all about Jesus stickers too. In case you didn't notice, my if my truck's the one out there in, in, in that parking spot where all the motorcycles were trying to park. That hey Billy, let's park that truck a little further down since we're getting more motorcycles. Let's let the motorcycles get closer to the door. But I probably got the biggest Jesus sticker around, man. I have people come up me. I see. I look in my rearview mirror. I see people all the time doing this with their cameras, taking pictures of my back window because it, it's just great. Thing. I mean, it covers the whole back window. But let me tell you this. We talk about Jesus at home. We don't break bread without thanking Jesus for what he's done in our lives. How many know what I'm saying? When I'm sick, you know who prays for me first? My son and my wife. You know who prays for them first when they're sick? My son or my wife or me because they pray for each other sometimes before I get to it. I'm not only the pastor at home. I'm the dad. I'm the husband. And it's my job to tell about Jesus. How many get what I'm saying? It, 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 yes, what we're doing in Sunday school will enhance what you're doing at home. Does that, does that make sense to everybody? So let's, let's be the ones that, that do it at home so that when they get in there, they already got the memory verse memorized. You know what I'm saying? They said memory verses home with your kids, man. You better have that thing memorized and your kids should have it memorized. Amen? Amen. Amen. That was a little weak. Amen? Amen? Amen. We need to be telling about Jesus. Man, that angel said, go on back, tell them. He said disciples, but listen, man, when you're disciples and you're hanging around 24-7 like that, it's like family. I mean, get what I'm saying. You hang out with folks, man, that's why we call it the big house family. That's why I call it the big house, because we're like a family here. You're God's child. I'm God's child. We're brothers and sisters. We're all one great big family of God. Amen? So let's tell our family about Jesus. Let's tell our neighbors about Jesus. Let's tell our coworkers about Jesus. Let's be a blabbermouth for Jesus. Amen? Amen. So number one, let's be looking for Jesus around every corner because he's there if you'll just keep your eyes open for him. Amen? Number two, remember, he is crucified, Jesus. But number three, remember, he's the resurrected Jesus. Number four, remember, we got to tell about Jesus. And number five, remember, Jesus goes before you. How cool is that? Amen. You ever had a meeting you're going into you weren't looking forward to? Come on. We've all had those, haven't you? You know, yeah, yeah. if you're getting ready, if you, if you, maybe you're even sitting here this Easter. Maybe you were off Good Friday because some businesses were. I know there's a lot of people off because, man, there was a lot of folks riding motorcycles on Friday. And maybe you've been off for three days and you're kind of not looking forward to go back to work because you've got some friction or some turmoil, some hard times ahead of you. Maybe you're looking at your checkbook and go, ooh pretty tight the next few months. Remember, verse 7 says, he's going ahead of you. He's going ahead of them, the disciples. He's going ahead. He wants you to know Jesus isn't tagging along with you in life. How many get what I'm saying? He's going ahead of you. 
And if we'll keep that in mind in our heart everywhere we're going, we'll remember that as we face those hard times. He's already gone ahead of me. He's prepared the way. So all I got to do is look for Jesus in this situation, and he's going to help me get through it. How many see what I'm saying? He's going to use the things that we look like. Oh, this is the worst thing in the world. He's going to use those things to glorify himself. Amen? He's going to use those things so that what's going on in your life will be able to give him glory and glorify and bring light to him. Amen? So remember this Easter that Jesus went before you. How cool is it to even think? He went before you to get us all here. I mean, I talk about God's mapping all the time, how he mapped to get us all here. It's crazy. We got a couple of visitors here that rode up yesterday thinking yesterday was the bike blessing. Where are you guys at? I know you're here. I greeted you outside. Right back here. They, they got the hug. The cool thing was, was we got to do the full tour that way, huh? It was cool. They, they thought yesterday was Mike Bunch because I showed up. But how cool is it that Jesus went before you? You know what I'm saying? Jesus went before them, got them here yesterday so they know right where they were coming, feeling home. And I don't know, and, but even in that, someone went before that and they put one of these bike blessing flyers on their bike. They found Big House. And this is the whole mess. Even how God, 20 plus years ago, 25, 26 years ago, got me saved from a drug addict and, and dope dealing alcoholic to, to move to where we can have a church like this where everybody can feel like they can come in and believe and belong and become everything that God called you to be. The mapping of God going ahead of us is absolutely, you. it's mind boggling. It trips me out. It really, really does. So remember, Jesus goes before you. And number six, remember to see Jesus. See, sometimes we can get busy in this whole church world. And I, I try not to do that at Big House. We really only have a few main things we really do at Big House. We have church on Sunday, 1130. We might have to start having a second service is looking like. Okay, so we might have to start doing like 9 and 1130 so that we can fit more people in here. Amen. We go out on Saturday and we serve the neighborhood to be a blessing to those in our community. And we do a Bible study on Thursday. There's not a lot of other things going on. I, I, I purposely kept our church calendar more empty than full. You know why? You need time to live life and live life with Jesus and live life with Jesus with your families. You need time to, everybody's got a life. I'm not saying that your life is separate from God, so you need to make sure that you see Jesus in every part of your life. Amen? Not just on Sunday morning or Thursday night when you're here for Bible study. You see Jesus all the time. Watch this. Matthew 28 says, there they will see him. Take note that I have told you. Let me tell you. Take note. Just mark it down. Look for Jesus and you'll see him. See, because if you're not looking for him, you won't see him. And some, even some of the disciples, they were walking with Jesus after this resurrection business. If you go back and read one of the other stories, they were walking with Jesus. And you know what? They didn't see Jesus. You know why? Because the last thing they thought about, last thing they remembered about Jesus was that Jesus died. They saw him put in the tomb. And their mind was clouded with circumstance. You ever been so clouded with circumstance? Hey, listen, I, sometimes... I try not to do it, and very seldom do I do it, but once in a while I go home and I've got so much stuff on my mind from whether it be counseling, church business, taking care of people, stuff that I do. It's all running through your mind. And sometimes my wife will be talking to me, and it doesn't happen very often. And I, and I really, it doesn't happen very often. Do I hear an amen back from a white shirt and red hair? And I'm not forcing that. I'm saying, but it does happen. Yeah. And I hear, but I don't hear. How many get what I'm saying? Yeah. And sometimes you can be in the presence of Jesus yeah. and even kind of know it, but you don't see it. Yeah. You got to focus that you're going to see right. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. You got to make it a point in your life that I'm going to see Jesus. Yeah. I'm not willing to not see Jesus. I'm not willing to have a day that Jesus isn't paramount that day, that he isn't on the top of the stack, first shelf, first choice. Now I'm going to see Jesus. 
And last but not least, verse 29, verse 9, chapter 28, still in Matthew. Suddenly, and you're going to have those suddenly moments. Some of you men that did that book with us, Draw Circles, you've been having suddenly moments. Suddenly, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they went up to him. And they bowed down. And they worshipped. Church, family, friends, guests. They bowed down and worshipped. You know why? Because they were in the awesome.